though they played with the with the idea of extending direct route to the south, they knew it won't work. But if it won't work, that meant that a deliberate effort had to be had always to be made to ensure that the speed of development in the south was put under abridgment. It would not it could, the not answer could not always be discussed together. That inability to discuss not and South as one country has been at the heart of the Nigerian dilemma. Even when Nigeria was split in 19... I mean, first you had the North and Southern Protectorate, then you had the, the South broken in two in 1939 in order to have in order to have the east the west and the north the governor of the north temple had actually suggested a higher number we did not split i mean if you had if you had like seven, eight states in the north. And as, a, as a, the editor, edi, edi, the editor of a Daily Mail, London Daily Mail proposed for a four region nation, we would have had a, a different kind of arrangement, which need it have been easier it, there was no need that i mean there was no reason that it could be easier but the fact that a very the the much larger north was not split and the smaller south was split showed that something was the matter with those who were doing design lugard lugard was not just an imperialist, he was a colonial military officer. He knew that in the event of a struggle between North and South, you had to depend on those resources which will be split if the North was broken up. All elites of the North, I'm talk, speaking of colonial officials down to, down to modern times, have always been schooled in the modalities of the modalities of control between North and South. So if you created one state in the North, you must find a way to make sure that something is done in the north to increase increase their <laughs> increase their weight now that way of running a country means that people who do not deserve any recompense are granted recompense people who do not have the skills or the education to make certain performances, have to have it given give to them. Now, in the, in the Nigeria, we have managed to build the process. The struggle was always that the South was always better educated well there and to that extent easier to bring together at the level of just pure administration the north the north would have had a similar system 
size played a part in, in disrupting it. But even if size had no part to play in it, you needed to have a country that could relate. Irrespective of what happened in Nigeria, there would always be a division in Nigeria. Hmm. And the way it was masterminded in northern Nigeria was, was formalized by was formalized by Amadou Bedou. Hmm. They did it to the point where they wanted I mean, Islam was the majority religion in northern Nigeria. But they wanted to make sure that if Nigeria in future was going to be dominated by Christians, there should be northerners educated enough to be the leaders of Christianity in Nigeria who will be participants in that new era. Father Kuka and very many of them who went to school and to the Catholic Church were actually brought up to prepare for the day when Christians will be the ones calling the shots. Now, when a country has been so divided to the point that every ethic, every aspect of life must be divided along region, regional lines, rather than a case of building for citizens of all the parts to be common sharers of wealth, of culture, and general well-being, you will know it is no longer it is no longer about building a country. It is about a permanent, permanent domination, hegemonizing over of other people. A country that is created to be dominated can never can never build fast because if if those over whom you want to hegemonize are sufficiently large in number they will resist because the sultanas over whom such hegemony we are to be uh, we, are, we are to be exercised happened happened to be a people who were not only better educated but had more money it created a major problem so at the beginning the aim was to catch up with the south then it was since the South could not be, you could not catch up with the South, then you had to stop the South. Since you could not stop the South, you needed to destroy the advantages of the South so that, so that the full, so that the full circle can be drawn in terms of the kind of country the British wanted. Well, you no longer have to say that the British wanted it. The British merely supported the order they found on the ground, an order run by domestic imperialists whose ambition was to remain imperialists. They, they were managing and meandering, but they could not give up 
the original positions with which they started. And it is important, it's important to, to know that regionalism was very helpful in reducing the speed of creating this process of hegemony. Once they created, once regions were created and the Western region especially fought for self-governance as a factor of federalism. The issue, the issue was how much of what we have do we control? At the beginning, it was exciting when each region controls the resources available. But if each control, if if region control the resources available, one region at some point was likely to have so much more wealth than the other. How do you cut that one down? So every effort was being made to make sure that we will never arrive at that Nigeria where one region will dictate the truth. That one region was initially going to be just the western region. But once oil money started coming, the speed of increase in development in the east favored the east. Part of the problem with that, that speed of development is that the eastern region as a region did not allow the money to go around so that people from the Niger Delta, the people from whose areas the oil money came, were not being allowed to share equitably in the largesse that was coming from oil. By the way, that was why there was the Adakaburu uh, secessionist move in 1966. In the western region, in the western region, there was some luck in the sense that the social welfare policies of the Asian group government meant that even if you were denied everything, your children had a B line to free education. So that all poor people were at least allowed access to one thing that could help them raise, raise their standards. They are removing all that now. <laughs> now everybody, everybody has to send, send his child to, to a private school or to wherever. Mm. But to be very honest with you, even that is easy to solve. But let's come to this business of every region for itself, every region for itself meant that we also had a certain common relationship to Europe. You know, you know the every region had a virtual embassy in Britain. Those, uh, those, 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 those officers and their children we are still working for the regions and some of them are still working for the regions 60 years after independence in the sense that those whose fathers worked in the north found a way for their children 
to continue working for the north. Same thing in the east, same thing in the west. Some, some regions dismantled their own too early, but they still had ways in which the successors of the old crown, crown colony officers we are still working we are still working for the regions in which their fathers or relations worked some universities in britain had departments virtually de dedicated to regions in various african countries and nigeria i mean if you want to trace the Biafran resistance to Nigeria, there was that factor in it that the, those who worked for the Eastern region still worked for Biafra. And Nigeria also had to make use of the kind of, of the officers who worked for the various regions, which is to say that the advisors that many of them have up to today are based on colonial relationships, on, on relationships with colonial officers of the various regions. Incidentally, when the regions were being formed, their premiers were supposed to be writing, were supposed to be writing uh, reports on the various regions. I can tell you may some regions did not write. Because they did not write, there are things that have remained British secrets but are not Nigeria are not part of Nigeria's history. And to be very honest with you, that was where the control of Nigeria's history really began. Hmm. The British officials determined what could be saved for posterity. And what has been saved for posterity are only just being redeemed. And there are, there are ac academics, academics and their hirings who are positioned <laughs> to reproduce the histories and determine what can be saved for history. The British have done very well in that regard because, I mean, although we could not, although we could not uh, save our newspapers, and they are still available in some shape. The the secrets that British took away with them are secrets we still need to dredge. We need to know our country. In order to, in order, in order to to run it. Now, some departments in Britain, some university departments, we are simply dedicated to the defence of the elites of this or that region, and. They were provisional advisors, even if not appointed, for this or that region. When, when you are faced with a country so divided that even its post history, its post independence history, remains that divided, you really must reshuffle the cards. We cannot, we, ne we cannot say we must start afresh, but we cannot say that we, we will just repair because there are things we can't repair. So how does Bori come in, President Bori? Eh? How does President Bori come in in the rebuilding of Nigeria? Nigeria 60? No, Buhari was too much part of the divided Nigeria. No matter how he tried to be a straightforward man, he was built 
into the system of anarchy that was expected by British uh, gerrymandering to determine Nigeria's future. There is no way Buhari could have escaped it. Because even the Nigerian army was built up as a colonial army. And when, when the crisis of 1966 that was supposed to, of, so, supposed to change it erupted, the crisis was resolved in favor of a regional army. And so regionalization has been so central to the building and we we'll call it and the destruction of Nigeria that to re re to recentralize around a common a common ethic of federalism is very difficult. I use the word recentralize because even when a country is federal is federalized, it is still supposed to have a common memory based on a common history and common law. But in the Nigerian situation, everything that could help move in that direction were destroyed. I mean, I've had friends talking to me. I mean, anytime I talk to them about this lack of uh, a sense of history, they tell me to go to our house. I always laugh. When you go to Ari House, you are ashamed of Nigeria because you discover that the reason people talk about going to Ari House is because we have never had respect for history. Mm. Too much, too much is left out. Mm. And it's like uh, the proposition that, it's like the proposition that uh, the artworks of Nigeria should be brought together in, the, in one museum at Abuja so that we'll have one big museum like the British Museum. It's stupid. Why not defend the, the artistic resources of each of the, of the states now existing and simply make sure that there is a, a place you can go to if you want all the artworks of Benin, instead of carrying the artworks of Benin to Abuja, you defend them in Benin. Unfortunately, we are not building serious, uh, serious structures for the defense of each of the regions. The, mon the monies many of our, of our governors spend on defending their personal properties is always more than what they spend <laughs> on defending the nation's properties. But frankly, 